So may, perhaps of uh, from the military. So we're going to break away from this recorded program and take you live as we promised. We've straightened out the satellite problem to North Carolina for a debate in the 9th Congressional District. The candidates have been underway for about 10 minutes or so. Live coverage now with Republican Mark Harris and Democrat Dan McCready here on C-SPAN. Mark Harris supports would do. We need to come together, Democrats and Republicans, and roll up our sleeves, actually work together to take on rising health care costs, doing things like the gover government being able to negotiate directly with drug companies to lower prescription drug prices. Mr. Harris. Well, you know, I continue to be fascinated by how Mr. McCready continues to state my plans when the fact of the matter is I have never suggested uh, in any way, shape, or form that we would move in that direction of not covering pre-existing conditions. I think pre-existing conditions are something that should be covered, and there are Republican plans that are going to bring that forth as well. I think it's important that we understand that in most group policies, that if you actually, within a certain time frame, uh, go on that policy, then you have to be covered as a pre-existing condition. And why would we not propose that we continue to make that available, that once the plan is put in place, if you uh, list your uh, insurance or get the insurance within a certain time frame, then you are covered with that pre-existing condition and then allow the free market to take over and allow insurance companies to offer plans that ultimately the government can provide incentives through tax credits for those that are indeed offering those kind of opportunities uh, for those that would need that coverage. Uh, Mr. McCready, many in your party have called for Medicare for all, sort of a universal health care plan. Is that something you would support? No, I support uh, fixing the broken health care system that we do have by Democrats, Republicans getting together, rolling up their sleeves and taking on the special interests, the lobbyists, the drug companies and the insurance companies to lower costs. I do just want to return to this uh, point that Mark Harris just made because it is it's a very important the health care bill, Mark, that you said you support, mm. has been noted by countless experts and third parties that it would rip away coverage for people in this district with diabetes, asthma, cancer, and pre-existing conditions. So you can't just use political talking points to get at this. We have to look at the facts. And the fact is, I will protect health care for people with pre-existing conditions. That's a big difference between Mark Harris and myself. Go ahead, If Mr. you want to look at facts, you have to look at the fact that while talking points that uh, the Democrats will, will say about Medicare ignores the fact that the Affordable Care Act took $760 billion out of Medicare, and which has led ultimately to your question, Jamie, that in his party, the party of the Democrats, of which he talks like a conservative, but I'm truly the only true conservative in this race, that the Democrats are the ones that gutted Medicare with $760 billion in order to set up Obamacare. That's what has led to uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez simply asking for Medicare for all, which is what many in the Democratic Party are now seeking. Uh, let's move along if we can. This next question starts with you, uh, Mr. Harris, and it comes from Dedra. Um, we're talking about, it's estimated about there are 44 million student loan borrowers meaning that the student loan debt is pegged at $1.53 trillion. Um, what, if anything, should the federal government do to address this? Mr. Harris. Well, I think that, uh, again, when we, we're, it's bigger than just an issue that the federal government should step in and somehow forgive everybody's loan. That's certainly not the answer. I do think that it's a problem that has continued to get out of hand. And I think we've got to begin to develop an education ways that individuals when they graduate high school uh, may be able to look at through community colleges and other options of trade school and others rather than racking up incredible debt. There's a lot underneath that issue of the student loan debts that have, have gotten out of control with the rising cost of education. Mr. McCready. It's a really important question and I think it starts with the government should not be able to profit off of student loans. But I want to make a broader point on education because this is an issue that comes up so much on the campaign trail, all the way from Charlotte out to the eastern part of the district. Um, we used to be the leader in education in North Carolina. We used to be known as the leader in the South in education. Um, there is actually an effort by politicians in Raleigh and Washington to destroy public education. Look at where our, how little our teachers are paid now. And I was just with one the other day out in Fayetteville who told me that She's spending hundreds of dollars out of her own pocket to afford 
to pay for basic school supplies like pencils for her students. This is an area of great difference between Mark Harris and myself. Mark Harris is on the record saying that he would abolish the Department of Education, which would reduce our fair share of federal funds into the education system in North Carolina, make matters worse, not better. Mr. Harris, give me a quick 30 seconds to respond. I have very clearly stated that the Department of Education has lost its, its purpose and its way from what it was founded in 1976 to be, or 77, to be a clearinghouse for programs that made a difference in school. It has become a larger agency. It has become an animal that is eating money, and it is dictating to the states and to the local communities policy that it should not be dictating. And I have recognized that education Education, we all must agree, the closer control gets to home, the better and more effective education is. A couple more questions in this segment before we have to take a break. Jim Morrill has another one. Uh, you've both been campaigning a lot around the district, the 9th district, and you both know that it's a very diverse district. Places like Charlotte are prospering, and yet you have a lot of rural counties that are struggling. Uh, what can the federal government do for rural areas like that? I think Dan McCready was first this time, if I got my back and forth correct. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. We need a fighter for this district because people are absolutely getting left behind. Uh, there is no place in the entire country that has been more left behind than Eastern North Carolina. Just take a look at, uh, at the, the recent hurricane. You know, I'm, I'm with a mom in a shelter a few weeks ago there with a six or an eight month old baby whose home was flooded in Lumberton. She told me she was there just two years ago after the last hurricane. So people deserve a lot better. One thing that many people don't know is that we're a donor district. To Washington, which means that every dollar we send to Washington out of our tax dollars, we're actually only getting 50 cents back. That means that we have not had somebody fighting for our fair share of federal funds in Washington. And one thing I will do will be a fighter for this whole district, but a fighter for Eastern North Carolina and the rural part of this district. Get our fair share of federal funds for infrastructure, community colleges, education. Give people some leadership that they deserve. Mr. Harris. I think one of the best things we'll do, Jim, is when we understand how we got to this place and how many of those counties that you're referencing down east were left behind. Many of it was the failed policies of uh, NAFTA uh, back when it was negotiated. I, I remember growing up in North Carolina and making many trips to the beach that took us down through those areas. And I remember times when uh, Richmond County and Scotland County and Robinson County, many of those were much more thriving. But uh, through many of the bad deals that were made, of which I must say our president is working hard to make better deals now, uh, all of those counties have paid a price. So I do think that the policies that are passed through our Congress, signed by our president, ultimately can make a huge difference uh, in those districts. I do think infrastructure is an important part, and we've got to make sure that we are champions for those districts. Education, getting them the tools they need are absolutely critical. Uh, we have one more question, and it comes from uh, Carol Johnstone. She is a viewer who sent in a question ahead of this debate. And for full disclosure, she is a Democrat. And she asked this question. Please explain your views on the role of public schools in our communities, public school funding, and science education, including teaching students about climate change and evolution. Mr. Harris, first to you. Well, I, my views on public schools in our communities, obviously, uh, we, I believe in public schools. I'm a product of public schools. Growing up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, my wife uh, is a teacher and taught in public schools. Um, and I believe wholeheartedly. Her mom was a 30-year North Carolina teacher. Her dad was a teacher and coach and ultimately became superintendent of schools. So I believe in public education. Um, I believe it is absolutely critical that we fund it adequately. But I believe we've got to be creative and we've got to be effective, and we've got to make sure that we have effective schools. Obviously, uh, Republicans at times have not had all the answers. The No Child Left Behind had some real issues and problems that did not advance where we needed to be. But I do believe that public schools play a key piece in what we're doing. Mr. McCready. It is unacceptable to me that any child would not be able to get a great education in 2018 in the greatest country in the world. Right now, your education in North Carolina depends on your zip code. It's a very different education if you grow up in Southeast Charlotte or parts of West or North Charlotte, or if you grow up in Rockingham or in Lumberton. It depends on your zip code. That's wrong. Every child, no matter their zip code, should have the chance to go to a great public school. Um, that's why it is so important that Mark Harris has said he would abolish the Department of Education. The Department of Education is funding our schools in this district 
a lot of federal funds that we deserve for low-income students and students with disabilities. We need to be able to pay our teachers more, investing in our schools, and be a leader in education in our public schools, not taking us backwards. I'll give you a quick response time. Jamie, he continues to go back and reiterate um, uh, about the Department of Education. Again, I will make clear, the Department of Education has gotten to a place where they are holding our money back if you do not go along with, core, with the things like Common Core and other pieces on education that, that don't, do not fit with what the citizens of North Carolina have wanted. So local control, state control of education has always been the best answer. The closer to home it gets, the more effective education is. And with that, we will end segment one. Let you gentlemen catch your breath for just a moment. Coming up after the break, we are going to dive into some international issues. Keep it right here. Our debate continues in a moment. So this debate is taking a quick break. You've been watching candidates for North Carolina's 9th Congressional District, Democrat Dan McCready and Republican Mark Harris. Let's take a look at their campaign ads. Work can be hard to find. Dan McCready made North Carolina a leader in solar power, which created good jobs for people like me. Dan runs a tight ship to get results. No surprise, he was a Marine after all. Dan McCready helped create hundreds of jobs that can't be outsourced. He'll work to make Congress run like a responsible business, making payroll and balancing the budget. I trust Dan to work with Democrats and Republicans to make Congress work for North Carolina. I'm Dan McCready, and I approve this message. You know, every good North Carolinian knows the difference between this color and that color. But if someone claimed that these were the same color, well, they'd be wrong. Take Dan McCready. Talks like a conservative, but he's shading the truth. He donated to Hillary Clinton, took money from the Pelosi crowd. McCready's team wants to grow government and repeal your tax cut. He's with them, no matter how he tries to color it. I'm Mark Harris, the real conservative, and I approve this message. Tonight in New Jersey's 11th Congressional District, Democrat Mikey Sherrill meets Republican Jay Weber in a debate to take the seat of retiring Republican Representative Rodney Freelandheisen. You can watch live tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on C-SPAN, your primary source for campaign 2018. With Election Day less than a month away and the control of Congress in question, see the competition for yourself on C-SPAN. Watch the debates from key House and Senate races. Make C-SPAN your primary source for campaign 2018. And we'll take you back live now to Charlotte for the 9th Congressional District debate. District 9 debate between Republican Mark Harris and Democrat Dan McCready. Right now, we want to turn our attention to some of the international issues the country is facing. And Dedrick Russell has our first question. Um, first up, um, do you support the administration's zero tolerance policy on immigration? And by the way, do you think there, uh, what do you think about the path to citizenship? Mr. McCready. I'm glad you mentioned immigration because I think this is about the best example out there in the whole country of where Washington is broken. I think it's no secret what we need on immigration and we need what's not happened for decades, which is Republicans and Democrats to get together and work together toward a bipartisan, comprehensive immigration reform. And I agree with probably 90% of Americans that that's a reform that should do certain things. So first of all, it should secure our border. I understand that as a Marine who has served overseas, we absolutely need a secure border. Um, second, it should be a a reform that respects our laws. Some folks that are here now should have the opportunity to get right with the law and then get to the back of the line. And third, it should be a comprehensive reform that upholds our values. No more ripping kids away from their parents at the border. Um, that's something that's not consistent with our values. I'm someone who will be fighting for Republicans and Democrats to come together and work on this hard problem on behalf of people in North Carolina. Mr. Harris. You know, there's a, uh, I, I do agree that the immigration issue in America is huge and it is a broken system and there has got to be the reform. I do think that there was a compromise that was put out on the table by the president that was uh, really a great compromise and that was the four pillars, if you will, 
that would lead to DACA residents uh, having a pathway to citizenship, a pathway to legal status seemed to be the, the conversations through that. And that was to number one, build the wall. Um, and people say, well, we can secure the border without building the wall. I just believe there's too much evidence that where pieces of the wall have been built, that the numbers are staggering of how much lower they are of where people are coming across illegally. Number two, that we end chain migration, that the individuals that are vetted and come, that they come and bring immediate family with them, but they don't extend out as far. And then I also think that we've got to end the visa lottery, and I think ultimately that we've got to make sure that E-Verify is being employed. Let me follow up with both of you if I can. You mentioned path of citizenship for those with DACA, in DACA. There's tens of millions, right, that we think are in this country illegally right now. What about them? Is there a path to citizenship for them, Mr. Harris? I think that once the border is secure, and I think once we have in place that and we know that we're dealing with, we do need a system where we bring them out of the shadows, where they are able to pay a penalty, pay back taxes, be able to learn English, be able to uh, integrate into our culture and society and I genuinely believe that yes there could be that opportunity but it cannot begin until we secure the border. Mr. McCready. Uh, I agree that as part of a bipartisan and comprehensive immigration reform part of that should be some folks who are here as I mentioned earlier should have the opportunity to to get right with the law and then get to the back of the line. Thank you gentlemen. Let's move on to our next question. Cassie Cope from the Charlotte Observer. We've been at war in Afghanistan for 17 years. Do you see a way out? What should the United States do? Mr. Harris, first to you. Well, I believe that uh, we, we need to continue to have our generals and our folks on the ground continue to bring the wisdom and the advice of what is happening there. I think our president uh, listens to them, and I think that he is wanting to make the best decisions. We've seen what can happen when you pull out of an area too early and you leave a vacuum. I think most uh, people agreed that ISIS really got their stronghold when our troops were, were drawn down, pulled out, and left that opening there. So I do think that uh, we, we need to seriously understand the circumstances of what is happening, and we do need to make sure that we bring stability to that area in that way. Mr. McCready. This is a question that's very important to me because I began my professional career uh, serving in the, in the Middle East, leading a platoon of 65 Marines. I understand how serious it is when you commit troops to war, but I also understand that we need a strategy. I would argue that we have not had a national security strategy in this country as it applies to Afghanistan or anywhere else for at least 15 years. We didn't have it when I was in Iraq. We didn't have it under President George W. Bush, President Obama, or President Trump. We need a strategy that on the one hand uses our military might, but also combines that with our economic strength and our diplomacy and our work with our allies so that when we commit troops to war, we do it with overwhelming firepower destroy the enemy, get the job done, and then come home. No more of these long-running 15-year wars. I wanted to get to a question that came in again from uh, one of our viewers here, and this is from Neil Gaiman. He is a registered Republican from Waxhaw. And Mr. McCready, I'm going to have you answer this first. He says, tariffs have done more to hurt American businesses instead of helping. I own a small business that now has to raise prices on my products because of tariffs. What will you do to pull back tariffs and look at how we can fairly trade with other countries? It's a really important question because, unfortunately, um, there are a lot of people in this district that are being negatively affected by the tariffs. Um, another example is I was just with a soybean farmer the other day out in Robinson County who's being, being really hurt by the tariffs. I do credit, credit President Trump, though, with, uh, with starting an important conversation, which is, in my view, Democratic and Republican administrations for decades have not stood up to China on trade. And we have a situation where American businesses, especially small businesses, American families are at a disadvantage versus, for example, Chinese uh, subsidized enterprises. So my issue is not the conversation that's happening to stand up for North Carolinians on trade, but it's in the execution. I think we do need a comprehensive approach that levels the paying field on trade also deals with very serious cybersecurity threats from China, uh, and then also stops the theft of the intellectual property of American businesses. Mr. Harris. You know, the tariffs, uh, all of us, I, I think, uh, certainly as conservatives, have, have felt like tariffs were something that uh, were not a long-term solution. 
And I certainly believe the president uh, is demonstrating that he doesn't believe it's a long-term solution, but has been a, a, a real direct negotiating tool that has helped. I do think that we have seen Europeans come to the table very quickly, moving toward a no-tariff uh, policy. Uh, we have seen what happened with Mexico and now Canada and how our dairy farmers are benefiting from the renegotiation that took place there. And that has helped set the stage for the now the approach to China, which has been the goal all along. That's where the playing field has been most disproportionate. And this president has made a commitment to do that. I do think that our farmers are uh, feeling an effect. But what I hear from them is they're patient with this president. They understand the overall vision that he has. And we're seeing opportunities come even for soybeans that no one actually saw would even be coming. I want to turn our attention now to just some of the recent headlines uh, that we have seen certainly around the country. And Cassie Cope has our next question. This past Sunday, the Carolina Panthers saw their first football player kneel during the national anthem. What do you think of these protests? Mr. McCready first. As a Marine Corps veteran, uh, I stand for the national anthem. I stand out of respect for uh, our veterans, out of respect for our, our first responders and all who have uh, served our country. At the same time, I'm a white guy. I've not faced discrimination, and I understand that someone next to me may kneel and may do that because he or she doesn't feel heard. Um, I think what we need to do in this country is come together as Americans and condemn the racism and evil. I think it is a uh, tragedy and it is sad when you have white supremacists and neo-Nazis marching in the streets of Charlottesville, one of our historic southern towns, and we can't come together and the politicians in Washington can't actually condemn racism and evil by name. Mr. Harris. You know, I think that um, what it really does is speaks to the values that we've lost in the culture I think it speaks to the fact that um, we should stand out of respect for the flag. Um, issues and how people feel and, and political issues, uh, there's, a, there's a place that we debate those, there's a place that we carry those out. But the flag of our United States of America is something that all Americans should, should appreciate, should honor, and should respect. And I think that ultimately um, that's that's the problem with what's happening with the kneeling. And uh, my plea and uh, my encouragement uh, would be for all of us to stand united, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, and be able to stand in respect for the flag. I have a couple of questions that are going to be individual uh, to, to each of you right now. Mr. Harris, I want to start with you. As a Republican, Mr. Uh, President Trump, I should say, obviously also a Republican. Give me one issue in which you do not agree with him. Well, I, I would say again, uh, going back to the tariffs, um, I, I think I certainly have had uh, a bit of shakiness when we went down that road. Uh, because I've been a free trade individual and believe in free trade and believe it is, it is crucial. I've also come to understand in the midst of it that uh, fair trade is critical because the more I've learned in the process, the more I've seen that we've been looking at uh, free trade in the rearview mirror for a long time and it's been missing and that, that we're trying to level the playing field. But I am concerned about tariffs, and I, and I do feel like that it is something that we've got to monitor, we've got to be careful with it, and we've got to make sure that, uh, that we maintain not a trade war, uh, but that we do maintain the relationships that we have. Uh, Mr. McCready, the converse of that, give me something that you would agree with the president on. Well, I agree with the president uh, that he has started the conversation on trade, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't, I don't disagree with you, Mark, that the execution um, as part of the president's trade plan has not been strong. But I think it is important to level the playing field for American workers and American businesses that are not on a level, level playing field vis-a-vis -vis China. Uh, let's move along. A couple of more questions that Jim Morrill has. And again, we'll start with Mr. Harris. Okay, Mr. Harris. Uh, as you know, the special counsel's investigation has been going on for over a year now. A lot of Republicans say it's time for it to end. Uh, do you agree with that, or would you support efforts to continue it until it plays out? Well, you know, Jim, I think it, I think it is playing out, and, and I would hope that it is drawing to a quick conclusion. Um, there has seemed to be no evidence to this point 
of, of collusion, which again, uh, when this whole thing was started, it was supposed to be narrow in scope, and, and as oftentimes happens, it just continued to get broader and broader and broader. Um, I do think that, uh, that it has gone on long enough. I do think it would be in the best interest of the country for it to draw to a conclusion. If there's something that's happened, then let's hear the report and let's deal with it. If uh, they haven't been able to find the evidence, then I believe it's time to shut it down and bring that report to the American people so that we don't spend an entire four years of an administration uh, dealing with this kind of special counsel investigation. Jim, go ahead. A related question, Mr. McCready. Uh, there's, uh, there, there's likely to be an effort, if Democrats take the House this fall, uh, to begin impeachment proceedings, proceedings against the president. If you get elected, would you support that or would you not? These kinds of decisions are very serious decisions, Jim, and they're decisions that uh, need to be handled based on the facts and the evidence. Uh, as a small business owner, uh, I don't deal in hypotheticals, I deal in the facts. Uh, and, and that is a decision or any decision related to our Constitution that I would treat very seriously based on the facts at the time. I, what I will say is this, we have got to end the partisanship in Washington. Washington has become so broken, it is so dysfunctional. People get up there, I think, with good intentions, but it becomes all about whatever their party leader says or whatever the special interests say or, or whatever they have to do to get reelected and, and get money, and they forget about the people in North Carolina who deserve better. That's why I've said since day one that I will not vote for Nancy Pelosi. I wouldn't vote for Paul Ryan either. I simply think that we need new leaders on both sides who can take us past this partisanship that is killing us so Democrats and Republicans can work together again and get to work for people in North Carolina. All right, uh, we have time for your follow. Go ahead, Jim. Follow that up. Uh, you say you, you won't support uh, Ms. Pelosi for speaker, and yet Republicans say that you've taken a lot of money, you've gotten a lot of money, a lot of money has been spent on your behalf by a group that's associated with her. Uh, what do you say about that? Do you feel, would you feel obligated because of that money? The only people I feel obligated to fight for are people in North Carolina. Uh, and look, this whole thing for me, Jim, is, is not a career. If you'd asked my wife, Laura, a year and a half ago, she would have told you we were perfectly happy spending time with our four little kids and continuing to build my clean energy company. This is a calling I feel to serve again, much like I felt that in the years after 9-11 before joining the Marine Corps. We have got to get a new generation of leaders to Washington. So I have not taken a dime from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I will not support Nancy Pelosi. That's nothing personal. We need new people up there. We need some new blood. Who I look forward to working with, should I have the honor of serving, are the post 9-11 veterans who are running all across this country. There's people all across this country who, like me, didn't plan to do this, but feel very convicted of the direction our country's headed. And I plan to form a caucus with those post 9-11 veterans, Republicans and Democrats, so they can work together and actually get things moving again for people. Mr. Harris? Yeah, I would like to respond to that because I, we hear oftentimes Mr. McCready talk about the importance of bipartisanship. And, and I agree with that. I, I've spent my life working with people from all walks of life, all different perspectives, bringing them together to work toward a goal that is bigger than themselves. But I think that there is a certain uh, naivete, if you will, to think that you will go to Washington as a Democrat and not support Nancy Pelosi, who frankly is spending that $350,000 that you're referencing, Jim, to run negative ads against me. In fact, I think I heard that I was the third, uh, ranked third in the country in the amount of negative ads that Nancy Pelosi's PAC has spent. There's a reason for that, because if Mr. McCready is elected, he just represents a number that would move the Democrats toward a majority. If they become the majority, Nancy Pelosi has already done the math. She will be the speaker. Maxine Waters has the seniority and will become the chairman of the Financial Services Committee. And this is just part of a reality that I think we all have to deal with. Yes, we want bipartisanship. Yes, we want to work together. But there are certain political realities that all of us in the 9th District have got to face. And this is one of them. Uh, Dedrick, I know you had a question uh, about Which the speakership. Uh, I, uh, let me ask this question first, and then I'll give you a chance to respond, okay? Go ahead, Dedrick. Yeah, since we're talking about speaker, um, Mr. Harris, you've said that you would support someone like um, Jim Jordan of the Freedom Caucus. Um, do you still stay with that, or is there someone else you would back? 
I, I have said repeatedly uh, that, that even when I made the statement about Jim Jordan as him being a name and an individual that, that I could support, there have been three names that have been mentioned by Republicans very clearly, and that is Jim Jordan has been mentioned, Kevin McCarthy has been mentioned, Steve Scalise has been mentioned. I believe in my heart that any three of those men would be superior any day of the week to Nancy Pelosi, who we have seen in action in that speaker chair. Now, the way it works, and everybody's got to understand it, the, after the election, Republicans will go, we will meet in caucus, and we will choose the nominee that will be speaker. The Democrats will do the same. And then we will come together, and whoever holds the majority, their person is likely. So Dan McCready will either vote for Nancy Pelosi, if she's the nominee, or vote for the Republican, and I'd be curious if he'll do that, or he'll just abstain. I mean, that's, that's the options. Uh, let me go back to you, because there were questions about money that you, your campaign has used or has been used in your name, I should say, and also the speaker. So go ahead. Well, again, I've not taken any money from Nancy Pelosi. Um, I am starting to believe, Mark, that you think you're running against Nancy Pelosi. You're running against Dan McCready. I want to focus, though, for a moment and step back on this conversation, because it is important that the voters understand there is a dramatic difference on the ballot in terms of how Mark Harris would work for people in North Carolina and, and, high, and I would. Mark Harris represents the same kinds of extreme and divisive and partisan politics that have gotten our country where it is. He has said he would join the Freedom Caucus. The Freedom Caucus is the most extreme caucus in the Congress, which Mark Harris has said he would shut down the government if he doesn't get his way. He's on the record saying he would shut down the government if the, uh, the government doesn't defund health care. I don't believe in that. I believe in putting country over party and working with both sides to get the job done. Real quick, would you shut down the government? I have said that there, there are times that when we're looking at votes, and, and it's not a matter of having my way, but if it's a matter of voting and moving bills forward and spending bills, if it comes to a point that, that the spending bill is going to do more damage than it's going to do good, then yes, there comes moments in time, as the president has made clear, that we have to take a stand uh, in order to get things accomplished. And with that, we are going to take a pause, a quick break, much more when we return. This debate taking another quick break. You've been watching candidates for North Carolina's 9th Congressional District, Democrat Dan McCready and Republican Mark Harris. Let's take a look at their campaign ads. The Marine, Dan McCready, never asked who in his platoon was a Republican or a Democrat. All that mattered was that the mission was completed. They don't get that up in Washington. Politicians in both parties have failed us. That's why I've said since day one, I won't vote for Nancy Pelosi. We need new leaders to get things done. I'll work with both parties to balance the budget and protect Social Security and Medicare from cuts. I'm Dan McCready, and I approve this message because I'll always put country over party. I'm Mark Harris, and I approve this message. Are you tired of America being held back by the politicians in Washington? Most Republicans claim to agree on the big issues, lower taxes, fewer regulations, a strong national defense, but not much seems to ever get done. The only way to change things in Congress is to change who we send there. Let's tell the career politicians we have had enough. We the people are taking over. Mark Harris for Congress. Tonight in New Jersey's 11th Congressional District, Democrat Mikey Sherrill meets Republican Jay Weber in a debate to take the seat of retiring Republican Representative Rodney Freilingheisen. We have it live tonight in about 14 minutes on C-SPAN, your primary source for campaign 2018. With Election Day less than a month away and the control of Congress in question, see the competition for yourself on C-SPAN. Watch the debates from key House and Senate races. Make C-SPAN your primary source for campaign 2018. And we'll take you back live now to Charlotte, North Carolina.
Welcome back to our debate as we continue to talk about the issues in North Carolina 9 as we get closer to Election Day less than a month away. I want to kind of piggyback on what we were just kind of talking about if we can. And, and Dana McCready, I'm going to start with you because party labels have become an issue in this campaign. To you, what is a Democrat? For me, the most important things in this campaign are fighting to protect Social Security and Medicare for our seniors that have paid into those programs over decades. Um, making sure that we're creating opportunity that moves North Carolina forward, like the 700 jobs I've helped create, helping build out a new industry in North Carolina in, in clean energy, um, but also taking on our national debt. Uh, those are things I'm proud to fight for, although I don't think that anybody should go to Washington as a Democrat first or Republican first. They should go as Americans first. I think that's what we're missing. You do have a D by your name, however, so why did you choose that party? Well, it's for those things I just mentioned. I'm not hiding the fact that I'm a Democrat. Um, those are very important things like protecting Social Security and Medicare, I think, are rights that our seniors have earned. Those aren't entitlements just to be put at risk with uh, the tax bill that uh, Mark Harris and the Freedom Caucus supports. Mr. Harris, let me ask the question of you. You're a Republican. Why? Well, because I believe that the Republican Party, as uh, I have experienced through the years, at age 14, I was dropped off at my, my, my parents at the Americans for Reagan office established by Jesse Helms in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and uh, cut my teeth there. You know, I believe as a Republican, it's very simple. We believe in limited government. We believe in shrinking the size of government. We believe in a strong military and a strong foreign policy. Uh, we believe in a, in a party that, as Reagan put it, if you're going to build a strong America, it's like building a three-legged stool. You got to have a strong domestic agenda, you got to have a strong foreign policy, and you've got to be strong on social issues. And, and he said, if you try to break off any one of those three legs, that stool will not stand. And so for me, that's what it means to be a Republican. Is this still Ronald Reagan's Republican Party today, though? Oh, I think at the heart of it, and, 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 and shrinking the size of government, government limiting government, lower taxes, uh, all of those things, yes, are still at, at bay. The personalities have changed, but, but the, the facts and the foundation, I mean, the, the Democratic Party is this party that met in Charlotte in 2012 and removed God from their platform. Um, and, and that was, and we all heard that vote. So things have changed. The Democratic Party today is not the Democratic Party of my grandfather was in. Um, and I think, again, that's just the changing dynamics to your question. Uh, real quick, Mr. McCready, you want to respond to that? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, too. I would never, you know, challenge anyone's faith. All right, we will move on to the next question here. We have a, one more from a viewer at home, and it comes from Brian Clark. He's unaffiliated. Uh, he is from Matthews, and he asks this. With all the rancorous partisanship, partisanship excuse me, in Washington at present, what are some issues which you believe you could compromise with congressional members on the other side of the aisle? Mr. McCready, first to you. We've got to cut taxes more for the middle class. Um, I supported very much the middle class tax cuts that were part of the the, the tax bill that passed last year, but we needed to do much more of that. Uh, give less of the tax cuts to Warren Buffett and the Koch brothers of the world and more to hardworking uh, teachers, firefighters, and, uh, and, and families that deserve a lot better here in North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Harris, where can compromise be found with Democrats? Well, I think um, there's been a great misrepresentation in what's going to happen with the tax bill that Mr. McCready said he would have voted against in December and multiple times has attacked me for voting for it. Uh, we saw a, they raised the standard deduction, raised the child tax credit. Um, that did not have any Democrat support, I might add. So I think if we're going to find areas that we work together, I, I think the immigration issue ultimately needs to be an area where we work together and, and, and meet together and accomplish those pillars I talked about earlier that, that I think, you know, lead to legalization, lead to a pathway uh, for these individuals to uh, coalesce into our culture. Uh, we're going to come back, take another quick break. Closing statements from both when we return. <laughs> One more break here Tonight for in this New Jersey from North Carolina's 9th Congressional District. Democrat Dan McCready and Republican Mark Harris have been debating. Let's take another look at their campaign ads. The Marine. 
Dan McCready never asked who in his platoon was a Republican or a Democrat. All that mattered was that the mission was completed. They don't get that up in Washington. Politicians in both parties have failed us. That's why I've said since day one, I won't vote for Nancy Pelosi. We need new leaders who get things done. I'll work with both parties to balance the budget and protect Social Security and Medicare from cuts. I'm Dan McCready, and I approve this message because I'll always put country over party. I'm Mark Harris, and I approve this message. Are you tired of America being held back by the politicians in Washington? Most Republicans claim to agree on the big issues, lower taxes, fewer regulations, a strong national defense, but not much seems to ever get done. The only way to change things in Congress is to change who we send there. Let's tell the career politicians we have had enough. We the people are taking over. Mark Harris for Congress. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll go from North Carolina to New Jersey for their 11th congressional district debate between Democrat Mikey Sherrill and Republican Jay Weber in a debate to take the seat of retiring Republican Rodney Freelingheisen. We have that live for you tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern right here on C-SPAN, your primary source for campaign 2018. With Election Day less than a month away and the control of Congress in question, See the competition for yourself on C-SPAN. Watch the debates from key House and Senate races. Make C-SPAN your primary source for campaign 2018. Back live now to Charlotte, North Carolina for the 9th Congressional District debate. And welcome back. It is time now to wrap things up. We have time to give each candidate one minute for a closing statement, and we start with Dan McCready. I don't think there's anywhere in the country where there's more of a difference on the ballot than there is here in North Carolina's 9th District. And I think the viewers tonight have heard about how dramatic those differences are. Just a few that we've talked about tonight. I will fight to protect Social Security and Medicare for our seniors. Mark Harris said people under 50 are, quote, the big loser, end quote, under his Social Security plan. I want to take on the national debt. Mark Harris supports a tax bill that adds nearly $2 trillion to our national debt. I support strong public schools. Marcus said he would abolish, demolish, he would abolish the Department of Education. Um, I believe Democrats and Republicans should work together. Mark Harris just said tonight that he supports sometimes shutting down the government. In my platoon, we all wore the same color uniform. We didn't care about where you came from, who your parents were, the color of your skin, or even your political party. That's the kind of leadership I think North Carolinians are ready for. And if I have the honor of serving, I'll do everything in my power to work together to get the job done for people in North Carolina. Dan McCready, thank you. Mark Harris. Well, I'll tell you what, it came to the end of the debate for us to recognize something we agreed on, and that is that uh, there's a direct opportunity to choose very different paths in, on November 6th. Um, the fact of the matter is, I'm the genuine conservative, and you know where I stand. I've stood in this community and, and throughout this area for a long time. Dan McCready talks like a conservative, but the reality is his presence will be another vote for Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. He says that, am I running against Nancy Pelosi? Well, sometimes it feels like I am since she has spent $350,000 in ads against me. But I can promise you this, I'll keep the economy moving. While we'll keep the economy moving, Dan, Pelosi, and the Demo Democrats will wreck this economy. We do have a choice on November 6th, and I'm asking for your vote on November 6th, Mark Harris for the United States House of Representatives. Mr. Harris, uh, thank you, and thanks to all of you at home for watching tonight. And gentlemen, appreciate you being here as well. Safe travels on the campaign trail uh, over the next month. The decision's now in your hands at home. Early voting starts next week, October 17th, Election Day, November 6th. WBTV and the Charlotte Observer committed to keeping you informed all the way through. Again, we appreciate you being here tonight. Have a great evening. Midterm elections are just 27 days away, and tomorrow night we bring you another congressional campaign debate. At 8 Eastern, we're live from Johnstown, Iowa, for the Iowa 3rd District House debate between Republican incumbent David Young and Democrat Cindy Axney. Watch live coverage here on C-SPAN, your primary source for campaign 2018. 
with Election Day less than a month away and the control of Congress in question. See the competition for yourself on C-SPAN. Watch the debates from key House and Senate races. Make C-SPAN your primary